Is the lion just standing there or is it moving oh, I can't see it. My husband says he can. Okay, uh, ask him if it's moving or... He says it's behind a dead tree. This is just one of many complaints filed against Ligertown. A nearly decade-long operation outside Lava Hot Springs to house and breed exotic big cats. <laughs> when I think about it, man, that was a long time ago. 28 years and some change, to be exact. That kind of in itself was, you know, unnerving, so. Bannock County Sheriff Tony Manu was just a few years into his career. Just pandemonium. <laughs> it was a mess. How would you describe that, I guess, compound, for lack of a better term? Shanty made of pallets, chain link fence, chicken wire. Um, it was just kind of pieced together. It's a compound that was there. We knew it existed. Um, always had complaints, but at that point, at that time, there was no laws against them raising exotic animals at the time. For that reason, Ligertown, owned by Robert Fieber, was 100% legal. In fact, I think that's why the law was created in Idaho, because of that mess. The mess, marked September 20th, 1995. The owner actually got mauled by one, and, and he was really always overprotective of, with those animals, but, but that night he was, what he wanted done, he said, kill them things. An eight-day intervention, killing 18 cats total, 15 on the first night. Sniper rifles on the hood of the Ford Bronco, and then as the next one comes out, you know, we're starting to shoot at these lions as they come out of that hole. So he called you guys and said, I need help. Yes, he called us. And, you know, there was a love-hate relationship prior to all that. I mean, we knew him by first name. I've talked to him before in town. He'd run around town in a uh, little, little blue pickup with a cage, and he'd always have one of the smaller, younger cubs in the back of his pickup. He's driving around town with a cub in the bed of his pickup. Oh, yeah. You just knew that's what they did. Calls about an escaped lion weren't new. Where were they getting out? And the evidence shows they could come and go. Yeah, that's the hole that they patched a while ago. And often did. Yes. You could see there had been trails coming down to that creek, and they were going through there, drinking out of the creek and coming back to the compound. Or rather, a graveyard. They got to feed them something, and it was anything they could salvage. Any roadkill, anything. Bones on top of bones on top of bones. And it was disgusting. It sounds like you don't miss it too much. No, but like I said, when people call about it, it's kind of cool to think back. I do have skulls in my office. You have a liger skull. I don't know if it's a liger, but it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the skulls. They used to be in a display case, but we've gotten rid of that display case, so I just I keep them in my office. Perhaps the last physical evidence of the Ligers' lingering memories. You would never know. Our county road and bridge went over there and just leveled that thing. Kept by one of the last serving law enforcement officers to be there. They're going to move the bear trap up close. His boots on the ground. Especially in 32 years in, in law enforcement, there's a lot of things that just stack up and... And I really don't think about it until someone calls about it. Sheriff Manu says he can't remember exactly what happened to Fieber legally, but Idaho Public Television reported he faced 100 charges, but that was knocked down to about a dozen misdemeanors, primarily facing animal cruelty charges. And I admittedly, Joe, did not know a liger was real yeah. until our producer Katie is like, hey, you should look into this today. It's been 28 years, roughly, give or take a couple weeks. Um, yeah, they're real. I, great movie. Love to pull dynamite. I didn't know you could actually do it. It's crazy when you talk about Ligertown, and I do want to again mention our friends at Idaho Public Television. Thank you so much for sharing some of your footage. Mm -hmm. And they had a great documentary that came out recently. We can link to that in Andrew's story. But it, it's just it, it's wild to think about what happens in some of these towns over the years, and especially back in the 90s, you know, before social media. Can you imagine today if it happened? Yeah, and laws changed about it because it was so wild, as you say, pun intended. Ha ha. Ha ha, Idaho's the Wild West. All right, Andrew Bartline reporting for us. We'll be right back.